Thank you. Uh, my name is uh, Isaac Kuria. I'm born again, of course, loving Jesus Christ. He's my baby girl, Charity. Charity me, yeah? Yeah, we've been married for the last now 25 years. We just got into our 26. Pushing strong, loving one another. God has blessed us with four children. Three boys, one girl. Girl is 24. Another boy is 21. Another boy is 18, 19 or, or something. And the other one is nine years. That was the setup of our family. We did our wedding in 1999, 30th of July. Yeah, that's when we, I walked her down the aisle. And I said I do, and she said she would do, and I'm still doing it. Yeah, the first time I met Isaac, I was, I had visited a friend. And uh, we had been in youths together, but uh, me, I was very new in that church, so I hadn't uh, met him. So that particular day, he came with a group of young men. And I remember they were from Gong Hills. They had gone to a hiking as youths. Eh? So he came and uh, he was very energetic. Uh, like now they were discussing about their experience. They are, I listened, I listened. I think I liked him. I liked him. So uh, the, the girl I had visited uh, did the introduction. And now from there, we just became good friends in, in the youth now. So we, we started uh, the church, going to church programs together, praying together, keshas together. Yeah, like that. Just good friends in the youth group. I think for like two to three years, we were just friends without anything, without eyeing him without thinking. Actually, I would I, actually at some point we were arguing and I would tell him, you, you can't be a husband to me because he was leading the, the youth group and he was very tough in keeping time. Like you could come late and he would tell you, just go home. You didn't come on time and we were to meet at eight, you are coming at, you, we are not going with you. So it was very tough. She was employed in a, in a shop where she used to work even up to Sunday, uh, up to Sunday at around one, isn't it? Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so she was not like a church girl as such, but the good side with the church that we are in, they had like splitted the small groups to the estates. So we used to call them home sales. So every, I think we, we were doing twice in a week. Yeah. So that's where I met her. And, and that's where she's telling you I brought the youth. I was, I was organizing youth for hiking, preaching and all that. So the first time, of course, I saw her, I, I, I liked her because I think she matured. Well, I think it was because of the way she was raised. Me, I was raised on the other extreme. You, you hear what she's saying that um, was just up and about. Eh? So I, I saw this girl who is calm, collected. And of course, I liked her spirituality. I really loved her spirituality. Because of be, me being a leader, I had interacted with so many girls. So I had seen so many behaviors with the girls. I had gone closer to girls. But for this one, she was a bit calm and serious with the things of God. Personally, I became serious with the things of God when I was young, when I finished my secondary school. By the time I was finishing secondary school, because I gave my life to Jesus when I was in Form 4, back in 1995. So, and, and since I had lived a very weird life and a very difficult life, I loved Jesus. And that was it. I didn't know anything else in life. And so why, I was also desiring to see someone who is as serious as I am. So I, I really liked well, the way I could see her coming for the fellowship. She would be told to lead praises. She was very good in praise and worship and, and lead. And then she would be told to pray. And I listened to the quality of prayers. And I could tell, even the parent of this girl, should be a, should they should be very serious parents because you would sense the prayers are not of her age, and then 
And that is it. I think I liked that aspect of being mature. Yeah. But of course, as she has told you, there was nothing at first. I was not in the issue of marriage. Me, I was leading people. I was leading around 40 to 45 people. I was taking formations outside Nairobi and hiking and all that. It was an interdenom group. So I was busy preaching Jesus, not necessarily wanting to marry. So I couldn't zero in on her because we, I think we met end of 1996. It was the end of 96, beginning 97. And because we could meet like twice in a week because of those home fellowships. And you know, our church was serious. If you miss out on home fellowship, anything that you need help from the church, they will have to consult your facilitator from the home fellowship. So again, it was something that we were supposed to go. So uh, the whole of 97, just looking around then towards the end of 97, I felt like my age mates were also hooking up. You know, for us church, we are not like nowadays when someone decides to begin dating anywhere. We had a very serious, uh, I would call it influence, age influence. So my peers began to narrow down. So I had also to think about how to narrow down. Where do I narrow down? <laughs> Closer to where I have been looking around. So that is towards the end of 97, I began to gain some interest with her. Not only interest, the, 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 the weakness and the strength that I have at the same time is that I'm fast. So it didn't take long. I went for it. Yeah, but I was, I was almost sure that she's the one I would want. That particular day, he invited me to Bomas of Kenya. So he told me, accompany me to Bomas. There, there was, I think, something extravaganza or something. Eh? So I, I, I said, it's OK. I, I will go. So I accompanied. That was on Sunday afternoon. afternoon. Remember, she yeah. was working at the Yeah. So that particular Sunday, we hooked up and we went to Bomas of Kenya. And we. We went inside and enjoyed a little bit. I didn't know he had an agenda. Honestly, me, I didn't. I, I had not seen it coming. <laughs> I had not seen it coming. Then we went outside. In Bomas, I don't know whether those houses, those traditional huts. houses, are, huts are, are still there. So we went around. huts, just checking around. And that's when now he dropped the, the bomb. Oh, sure. yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know. The feeling I had that day, I still feel it today as I narrate, you know. I got so shocked because I, I, I had not seen it coming. And uh, he insisted, he, he said, Charity, please allow me to marry. Would you marry me? So I was like, Ah, how do I even, I, I, I was not ready for that. I loved him, yes. I loved the God he loves, yes. But now settling down with him, uh, so I was like, hey, let me digest it. And then he was like, you know in your heart, you know whether you love me or not. There is nothing, there is nothing you are going for, you know from your heart. And it's true, I knew I loved him. And I, I also, as, as much as he was strict, I loved his seriousness. Mm -hmm. And I also didn't have any friend. I, I had nobody in mind that I, that I want to, uh, to settle with. So I was just open. For us, we used to approach marriage, not dating. We didn't know this, this dating thing. Eh? Our mind was fixed on the marriage itself, not necessarily checking on one another. Remember, we have pre, pre, predated, so to speak, because we have almost a year, you know, together. Eh? So we are not strangers to one another. Yeah, yeah, yeah because now, uh, during that time that he used to be our leader in the youth, I, would, I had known how he gets angry. I, would, I had known how he eats. I, I had known a lot about him. Though, but you are observing, there is a lot of observation that is, that is happening. So 
you see in courtship and in dating is to know the things we had known uh, without being conscious of them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I think I like that yeah. part. Yeah. Uh, I think it was very dynamic because she had very loving parents, very caring to this very day that our dad is late, mom is still there. They, they raised this girl very well. She was a, a darling to the father and the mother by the virtue that she loved the Lord when she was in Sunday school, became a Sunday school teacher. You know, she didn't give her parents any problem. On the other hand, I was a troublemaker in the village, <laughs> in the family, in everything. So me, I didn't have like, so to speak, supportive parents, especially my dad, he's late now. But of course he passed on when we were good friends, we made up along the way. But mom was already born again and a good woman, but she's just there in between. She doesn't know how to handle my father. So when I went to tell my father, mine was a little bit weird. I told my father, let's travel. <laughs> Our home is at the border, like talk, talk. I told him, let's travel. There's something I want us to talk. Of course, my father was very arrogant and all that. So we went home in the evening when we were seated. I told my dad, you know what he said? And he left me, I went to bed, and that was it. And you know, you have traveled almost 350 kilometers, and that was it. So I had to figure out how to begin. My mom doesn't know how to handle that. But for her, on the contrary, they were very happy. The parents were excited. They were very supportive. So we had to find a way, and, and we found a way. Of course, the good side is that the church used to play a very key role. Remember I told you we were in small groups called home sales? So when you go to the pastor, you show interest in Mary, he will refer you back to the facilitator of the yes. fellowship to, to, to that he or she can showcase how committed you are to the things of the fellowship because the church was a little bit big. So the pastor couldn't know us individually. So and that is how the facilitator came in and said, these are leaders in the home cell. So we, we rode, we rode on, on a very smooth slate. And again, then now the church was very helpful, very supportive. They would give us elders to go to negotiate with. So we were in the hands of the church. We were not alone. Remember for us, we weren't, weren't allowed to live together and officiate later. Ours was a holy wedding, and indeed it was. And we had to, we had to do it in a holy way. So it, it had a lot of process and so many steps before we get to I do. By the way, you're not telling them that you can't. I was a hustler. <laughs> I'm not a good jazz. I'm not a good jazz. I'm not a good jazz. By the way, so you can imagine you are you are taking someone home who is not working, and uh, of course, in in our culture, there is the dowry that is supposed to be paid before uh, before marriage, and and it it it, it wasn't there was nothing to see. It was it. Yeah. Yeah, alafu nile ya kuchangiwa changiwa na marafiki na kanisa the, the home cell that that group uh, whatever they, they had raised and unajua kwa hiyo bado there is transport eh? and now we, we have also to carry other other people on good like like uh, the, the the mom and the elders of course we, we had also to facilitate the transport and all that but all in all, my, my dad, I remember sitting with my dad and it was, uh, the, the challenge was in our, in our culture, it's the elders who negotiate the, the bride price for the girl. It's not uh, my dad per se. So the first time uh, we went, uh, we talked with the dad and we agreed. But when those men came to negotiate, they were like, whatever they asked, honestly, could not be met, could not be given. So. I, we again sat with my dad, Akiwa Pekeake, and also uh, he promised, he said, I, I did a very big mistake. I could not have given those men uh, the mandate date to, to negotiate because now I really want, if that young man has God and if he will take care of you, then I'll, I'm ready to, to, to give you out. And that's how we did the piano. 
mungu anaka kitu anything uh, but anyway uh, of course later on now he has gone to prove that he would have paid I potential if he had ni yeah. kitu siku ana yes lakini yes. nikapata yes but but my dad was uh, was uh, marching take care of my girl oh, yes. you can I, say I, that I, again i remember the, the, oh, the you can say that actually it, it was almost like a vow he had to make yeah. to dad that I you, went, I you never lay your heart on my girl my girl and once you get tired on her bring, bring her, her back, to me. back to me as yeah. she is i had to love you my we friend tutaongea ukimleta <laughs> hivyo tutaongea <laughs> but if you lay your heart on her please I mean, never again step on that get out of us what and he was very categorical so he really protected me now this guy had to style up oh, <laughs> oh. but I, actually he has taken that the word very seriously i've never seen him uh, violent uh, uh, he's, he's very calm ata ata akikasirika atoke tu ama anyamaze tu but he, that being physical god has really worked on him <laughs> because again for me i came from a very brutal family my family was violent not necessarily towards my mom but towards the children my dad was very violent so i had made up my mind that i would come up with a good marriage so i was committed to this in the sense that i wanted to see something good come up and i had covenanted with myself and now since i'm marrying someone who comes from the opposite she only knows peace she doesn't know problems we i want problems always <laughs> always so i had to style up and of course put up with her she's not so aggressive but i can assure you that point i really love the way the dad loved this guy and the mom and they do still love her even today to the death the death of the father he still loved this guy so i had to and also i i had been praying for a man who would love me the way dad loved my mom because, oh yeah, yeah my, my, my dad loved mom hey, hey. i've not seen he such protected love. her i mean i hey, 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 that man <laughs> may you rest continue resting in peace but he really he taught us love yeah and and he said that uh, love is the greatest language I mean it's it everything responds to love no wonder the bible ah. says that love never fails mm. even if when everything else is not working you try love love will work from where i sit now I'm, i think you had a wedding <laughs> to be sincere i think we had a wedding i was 26 yeah around 26 yeah, 20 26 she was 20 24 24 so remember we are young we only had seen several people do wedding ahead of us so we just copied the style aguku ana his wedding and programs. got the support we got the support of the church we did the wedding a white white gown wedding we we it was a very chilly day i didn't enjoy my my suit backfired <laughs> jesus you <laughs> remember <laughs> anyway to see me oh my god hey <laughs> everything oh, you should tell you should laugh at me You know, you know this 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 Chinese colors had just come up. <laughs> so that me and a guy who like trying out. So I went and, and the mad the suit it color. Now the worst is the color I chose pink. <laughs> pink coat eh? and uh black <laughs> black trousers. But I think what I had seen in the in the picture I thought they would be really different from what was on the ground. 
Ini tuh gua grau banget. Ah. Shida ni. Yo, so gua sini tu yuziku. Lazima backfire. My friend, ilika kitu ingine. Sijaiona. So that of course that that is a point and then she didn't see the clothes. So she was brought in the church. She she just saw us the way I don't know I was into. You don't know. Eh. Eno ya dada ya stereno tu yoana juicing goes goes na wana wao. Yo ngo venye alitoa jioni. I saw by my Aona babu the siju ya ta ibi. Hata wale wengine sidani kuna mtu aliwahi. No, maybe. Anyway, the clothes back fire. Among us. Among us challenges. Sisi ni mimi najua ku take it easy. Ah vitu zingine kwa nini mimi? There is no shame in tears. I mean, kama kina maana kina maana. Sisi hivyo tu ni ku back fire na nguo. Modo. And I I thank God because of the first like, one. I, 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 he was bad. So I just played it. Yeah, and we did a wedding. It was a chilly morning. A good wedding, of course, with the stress is a marerates. Unakuwaga pia na maishu za marera. Wakatu ndu unaona marera wanatokea. Anaanza kuleta magivigi vigi hapa na pale. Of course hizo vitu ukua. But eventually we got married and the day was over. Mtu wa mtu wa picha naye pia naye ni wale watu. Anapiga picha na kukata kichwa. I mean alileta kitu kingine hapo. I mean hiyo wedding je. I thank God because I'm still with this girl. So hiyo wedding hata kama sikumbuki picha na video tunaga kitu kayo yenyewe isi tukua na wedding day ilikuwa ni that yes wajue hivyo wale wana watch what is that is that first july eh that that first july 1999 on a saturday we did that yeah a good one and we began like anyway wedding ilikuwa ni kitu ya kupitia kuku na hizi wedding tunaangalia kwa talent ya ujue unataka yako ikue hivi ni ya wale tulikuwa tunaona hapo mbele na hata kwa church nakumbuka tulikuwa tunatumia vile gari ziko hapo As long as niam to I remember one of the he is now the deceased. Uh siku hiyo wedding kukawa kuko na barrio. Siku hiyo hiyo kuko na barrio na van ya chai ya chachi kwa hapo. So, yes, eh hakujua van ya chacha iko ikuje kwa wedding yangu. So yeye alikalia hapo mbele na akaweka mkono hivi anaendea anaenda kuchukua wife the bride the, bri- the, the, the bride. Ngoja gari come. Ngoja come. Hivi na alikuwa amesikia tunachukua wife hapo ziwa you chat ni kwa ni hapo kikosh sasa anashindwa kwa ni ziwa ni hama si alikuwa mtu mpaka moja ya hapa ya Kenya sasa hizi zile anaona maiti kitoka ndio anashindwa kwa ni ni chani ya kufa yani hapo ndio aliamkia alikimbia all the way kutoka Kenya hata arudi mpaka huko alikuta sasa tunamaliza kushikanishwa sasa so anyway hizo harusi zilikuwa na vitu kwa zake but anyway we married after after the wedding we went um the plan was we were to spend uh, that night in a hotel in, in in Nairobi center then we proceed to Nakuru where we were to go on uh, for the honeymoon my friend hey <laughs> we do it in jang we slept well and then in the morning we picked a mat for Nakuru along the way wacha ni umwe na tumbo wacha i started having the, the running stomach like hey we stepped the the the, the time the gari stopped we were looking for the washroom it ended up and then it was so bad that he told me actually we got in so a doctor nikapewa madawa and then he was like i can't live with you like this we had to go back we will have to go back so imagine <laughs> to merudi tu na <laughs> madawa <laughs> eh tulifika tu na kurumia ra siwezi kukwambia ilikuwa aje because hata sikuwa naona tumbo me i don't know what went wrong i think even because of that tension anxiety. and anxiety yeah. and all that my, my my stomach really reacted wrongly 
So aliponipeleka hiyo kahosi fulani hapo tukapewa madawa. Tulichukua mat the next ya kurudi. <laughs> Na I was to report to work on Wednesday following week. Etinyeri. 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 I had only begin, been given the I think now from Saturday the day we, we got married to Wednesday those few days. So basically we didn't go for the honeymoon because the time we went back now Nile to just checking on me how I'm faring on taking my drugs and then on Wednesday I had to go to Nyeri. Okay? Now for a whole week. So I was to I was coming on weekends. <laughs> weekends. Yeah, on weekends. I think for the whole year until I was now brought back to to Nairobi. Yeah. And we stayed. By the way, we went our honeymoon after eight years. You remember the time you took yeah. me to Mombasa? Yeah. Yeah. That's when I we mean, like that. That's mama. the time we said, now let let's just go and like two to three weeks. Yes. Somewhere me and her alone. Yes. No children. That way. Yeah. And we had small children. By the way, by that time we had three children, but we left them. And he told me, I want to, I want to take you now to to the honeymoon that never was. <laughs> and by the way, it was better. Uh, it was better. If I must, we were excited. Because again, I think our foundation of marriage was very good. We were looking forward for so many things. And for us, our focus was on marriage, not the wedding. So beside those hiccups, the wedding, aziku to sumbua sana. You know, nowadays, the problem is that people are so much focused on the day, such that like the mood of the day determines the mood of the years to come. For us, we were looking forward for the years to come. So, of course, I knew that we, I needed hard work. I was doing for Navy Baruas. Because again, because of the way I was raised, I didn't, I, I didn't, I didn't, I was not educated very well because of the background. So, uh, I, we depended on her salary, one or the other. It was, it was coming in handy to pay the house and to eat. I was hustling here and there, but nothing consistent and reliable. So the first year was basically just there, coming on over the weekend. We have a good time. She goes Monday morning, Friday evening, or maybe Saturday, she comes in. But she didn't stay there for long. I think the boss considered bringing her back to Nairobi. And she came back to Nairobi just for a few months. She was away, but we were able to put her. I think it's because my dad has had so much insisted that if this man is giving you peace, and he's taking care of you, everything else will flow. What happened, Nikwamba, after some time, <coughs> we started praying and I started thinking on how, um, on how it, he could uh, also become stable. So actually, that, that's, that's, it, it's, it's me that God used to, to open his eyes. So he, he did a, a refresher course and God, God gave him uh, a job in matatu industry eh yes. yeah actually he started as a makanga alianza kama makanga I personally say that I was very excited to be a parent. I think because of how I was raised, I had desired to see the other side of the family. I was wondering, kwani hakuna life ingine ya marriage? Because nimekwambia dad, dad hajai tupatia amani go. Yeah, yeah, hajai chapa madhi. But yeah, litu chapa sana. Kutoka mimi nikiwa around 7, 8, miss jai jua peace. So I was wondering, sikuna life man pengine the other life. So I was looking forward when I was married and prove my dad wrong. 
but I can love children, especially children. You have heard us say, I'm so close to my children. I love my children. I don't know whether there is, beside her, hakuna kitu ingina muhimu. Tusha ikuwa na magari, tumakuwa na manyumba, lakini I can assure you, siyezi trade in watoto. Because I realized that because of lack of understanding of our parents, and, and it's where they were, value of a child determines what, who the child shall become. So me from the word go, nakumuka tulipo pata fastball. That day I was very excited to be called a father. I was very proud. I wasn't even sure whether I was going to be a father. I was concentrated on that. Concentration is that I am going to be a father. So I loved that child the whole of my heart. Actually, we stayed for four years without conceiving the second born. Three years. Three years. And uh, I wanted to stay with that girl. That girl would stay. Angela was like, I was going to be a father. For the second month to be conceived, I was a, a, a matatu driver. So I used to leave home at 3, 3.40, and come back at 11. Unajua mtu anatoka saa kumi kielekea, anarudi saa tano. Ishu angwa tanero hakuna, mtu hui haka kwa sekano. So I remember, even my firstborn almost forgot me. So she used to bring the girl at the bus terminus to see me. Then in Kala, I see mtoto peke yake. <laughs> yeah, uh, I thank God for that because uh, the, 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 the children are very close. They are friends. Ni ma beshti. Hata wiyo mwenye kwa campus, akipi ya babake usikia wakiongea. Wako ma beshti sana. Dejua, Mr. Anawake, there is a day she called Elena, anambia rafiki yake, I'm here with my boyfriend. Would you put a boyfriend, Lini? I do want to talk to the boyfriend who I mean. So I can put him back as him. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's nice. It's, it's really, it, it makes parenting to be very enjoyable. And I, I don't take it for granted. Yeah. Right now, our children are a little bit big. Our young boy, when they close the school, she goes, he goes to live with the sister. So we are in the same house. And she really lives. Me, I'm a man of God, I'm a pastor. I'm doing a lot of things for internet and ministry and all that. So I take a lot of time in the house, praying and planning the meetings that I need to do. She lives in the morning. I look forward for the evening. When will this girl, and when she's late, I'm angry. I'm asking her, what is the need of me being here? when you are not here. Because to me, a home is her. So giving her a room to be, commitment, and of course above it, or looking forward for having time. You, if, you have, if you have listened to our story, we didn't enjoy our early days of marriage in the sense we didn't have resources, we didn't have environment. We didn't, we have really, I think she has even, one day she fainted. Because I could fit, I couldn't fit. She fainted in my presence. Because she had given birth to second born, I've gotten a job. I'm walking from Madare to Westlands, and I'm being paid 6,000, and I'm living with eight people. And I have two children. So that time, I came home uh, one week into her birth of the second born. She was in, we were living in a room 12 by 10, and we are eight of us in the same room. So she got out of the bed. Once you step out, you are in the city. And she asked me, baby, umepata kitu? Nikamambia haki sijapata kitu. She stood up. She hit down and she fainted in my presence. I closed the door. I began to cry. She recovered from the fainting. She began to cry. We finished crying. We prayed. I know men who say I'm not a sina kichwa mzuri. But let me tell you, there are things that when they happen, you need to be genuine to yourself. We prayed because we didn't have any other. It's not that I'm not working. I had just begun working. I was two months into. And we had a very interesting pattern. Because I get a salary. We come and subdivide it. We pay the shop where we used to take the food stuff and begin to take debt the same time you have finished paying. So that's, that was our lives. So when she came back from the fainting, we prayed. And we had, we had the... The, the, the knock on the, you say there are no miracles, there are miracles. 
a knock was on the door. Someone came to see her because she gave birth. And she came with something and we ate that day. The, our late uh, Miles Mongo used to say that uh, what really keeps a marriage is not love per se, it's uh, wisdom. Wisdom, knowledge, understanding. Actually, the Bible says that by wisdom, a house is built. By knowledge, the rooms are filled. And by the understanding, it, it is established. Yeah, it is established and, and the rooms are filled. So I, I normally say that um, love, love is not the main thing in, in marriage. There are those things you don't love, you don't feel. You know love is that feeling you feel. There are those times that honestly you don't feel. No feeling. You, you, you don't feel it. And, uh, but the wisdom, the wisdom that this situation is not permanent. There is actually what kept me is because I knew the potential he had and I knew the genuinity of his love. And I knew the has he was going through a lot by the way. That time Naskia Hajapata Kitu Nile, if he goes he used to come with the vitua, kitwa yambuzi, like Akipata na kujanai. Akipata maboga na uko na kujanai. Only that sometimes I I particularly and I, I could tell he wanted to, to take care of it. And what kept me that time is the wisdom. Because I knew if I shared with my dad, hey, uh, I will lose my girlfriend. <laughs> because now. my dad would, the, everything else in our Zakosa, but the food, food security in our family was like the priority. Like he made sure there is a lot of food. In fact, Tungevuna Mahindi he could keep aside for the whole year. So before to use Amazipianwe, there is food for the family. So telling him that to Nalalanja, I knew the first question would be, Kwani uliolewa na mtu inagani? Kama hawezi kukulisha? And I really avoided that. So I wouldn't share either with my parents or his parents also. So we kept on praying, trusting God, waiting, and knowing that that, that, that situation will, will just pass. And number two is uh, as, as you as you marry the person you love, also make sure to love the person you marry. There is a there is a difference between you don't have and you can't have. Many people are hardworking. It's only that they don't have an opportunity. And it's very important for those people who are watching us to know this. That we you should not be very quick to judge people because they don't have. Some of them it's only that the opportunity has not presented itself. If it presents itself. She will tell you, I work hard. I work hard. It's only that I didn't. You remember, she tells you that when we, we activated my license and all that, I couldn't even start to be a driver, so I went to be a tout. And I, and I did it for several years. I began raising my children as a tout, then I graduated to a, 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 a bus driver. And I did, I did all types of jobs. I also joined the... Uh, the non-government organizations, and I did very well. I've raised my children because again, what happened with our, with our, with our, the table stand, the table stand. I began to be now the one working seriously, and uh, and uh, as long as I could get an opportunity, I nilijituma. Na haja kubwa ya mtu ni kujituma. Ukipata nafasi, jitume. Number two, we, because of our friendship and our talk and our focus on marriage, we have prioritized issues in life. So whenever money comes, we know where to put the money. We are raising children, remember? You hear our girl has cleared her university. The second one is doing is in his second year. The last one is, is, is in, uh, the third one is in secondary and actually he's in a sitting. private. And he's sitting and he's a private, very expensive. Usually pay over 130,000 in a year. So it's an expensive school. And we have to know where our money goes. And this is my charge to those people who don't have continuous, like regular income. Just prioritize. Baby, it has been very exciting doing life with you. These are, I was thinking deeply and I want to be very sincere. I think this is a time I'm enjoying life with you. I have come now to realize the importance of investing in someone. I think this is the worst time if I check out. 
because this is the time I'm beginning to enjoy my life with you. I mean, your meaning in my life is so heavy, so heavy, in the sense that uh, I look around, you are the only thing I have in life. I, I mean, you have made the world to look so small, such that whatever makes sense, and you know, I know I'm not, I'm not saying it with words. I think I've, I've done it more than I'm, I'm saying it. But I think the best thing that happened in my life is you. And I think we, we, we were meant to live together. I, and I know there are those moments when we weren't sure whether we were meant to live together. But the final product is this, that we were meant to be together. And you know that I'll candle you around me, I'll take care of you, and I'll spoil you, and you know I do. And I'll take you up there, and I'll not drop you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take you up there. Now utashuka, utashuka takuwa juzana. Anyway, I promise to walk with you. I'm, I'm praying to God that he may give us more time. We need to begin to hang out now. Our children have begun to give us space to enjoy ourselves. So be ready. I will rock your world. Thank you for being that, that man who, who really understands and who loves me. And, uh, I thank God because you've been consistent. In, uh, it's not that you act. Oh yes. <laughs> yeah, you don't act in, in loving me and taking care of me and the children, and that is something I'll never take for for granted. And and I think for me that 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 me that is everything to me. So I wish you all the best, long life. Yes, yes. Good health. Mm, guvu. Mm, guvu. So that you can continue loving me. Yes. You know, you love me guvu you, yes, you need a lot of energy and strength to love me. And uh, also you you need money, eh? To make me happy. Is of it to to I pray that God will bring them along so that you can take good care of us. Mm. So thank you so much. And I also thank God that uh, I, you sh I don't find it sharing you with other people and especially in church because I don't miss you when I need you. You wow. are always there. So it is also easy to, to share you with, with, with the rest and, and the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. So I want to assure you that I'll always be there for you, uh, always stand by you, pray for you. And the vision you have, uh, both for the family and the ministry, you can count on me. Wow. Yeah, thank you. Wow. I think I, I feel like I need to give you a gift. <laughs> Who's most likely to? Couples edition. Who's most likely to fall asleep during a movie? Who eats the most? Who's the first to apologize during an argument? Who spends more money? Who takes longer to get ready in the morning? Who snores the loudest? Who is more romantic? Who cleans the house? Who likes to be the big spoon? Who said I love you first? Who's most likely to forget that it's Valentine's Day?